Well, let's start off in this video with a quick shout out to, uh, hey, uh, anyone who's subscribed to the channel, thanks for subscribing. Apparently, last I checked, I had 200 and something, and apparently I got 500 subscribers, which I didn't know till I went to make this video and opened my phone, and right away YouTube said, congratulations. So I don't know what that means, but it must mean something, so that's good. So I appreciate everybody checking the stuff out and you know, commenting and liking and sharing your thoughts. Um, a lot of my subscribers I've noticed have been guys that do similar work to what I do, and there's a lot of us out there. So I really enjoyed uh, sharing ideas and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so thanks. And hey, if you find the video and you like it, like it, subscribe, and all the good stuff, uh, thanks a lot. I, I do appreciate it. Uh, so we're just going to do a few quick ones. Uh, I decided with this car, we're just going to do some like five, 10 minute videos because, you know, we're kind of just doing a little bit of work and there's nothing too crazy. Uh, if you want to learn something, there's a good chance, whatever I'm doing, you can find it in my older videos. Um, you know, and in some of my videos, I gave a bunch of shout outs and hashtagged a bunch of people or whatever and gave them mentions. So there's a lot of content out there and there's a lot of good stuff. So where we left off with the last one, um, basically where all the new steel was welded to the old, we, uh, I think I explained it possibly, but if not, we'll hit it again. But if you look through here, um, when we welded that together, we gently tapped it in with the hammer and it creates a little bit of a cove and we were able to fill that with our fiberglass reinforced filler. And we did add a little bit of resin to that just to make it a little stickier and a little thinner. And I did, I went over it twice. So the first time we did it, you kind of squeeze it in. So it gets any little gaps, pinholes, any of that. And the second time we did it, like we kind of stuffed it in and we did it in one shot. And then we just kind of pulled it across, you know, and you want to push it in real tight and make it adhere really well. Um, the reason for that over the welds, if you got little gaps or holes, a pinhole, and in this case, we welded it almost solid, but not real solid. But I mean, back in the day, like these panels are installed and they're just tacked every inch or so. So we got to match what they did or better. We've probably outdid them by a lot. Um, and again, the reason why, if it stuffs in and blocks the holes, this stuff is waterproof. So any humidity, uh, look, when your car's sitting out in the driveway, and the gets nice and cold at night the sun comes up and hits it on the other side of the panel what you don't see is condensation form and evaporate this happens over and over so if you're in a rust belt like i'm in ontario canada they salt the hell out of our roads all winter so you understand that rust comes from salt and water and winter uh, but even if you're not so you, you can be up in the mountains somewhere where they don't salt or whatever, and I'm assuming you're dealing with rust as well. Because these vehicles, if they don't get salt all over them, they rot from the inside out. So that's from the condensation forming. So by doing this, as opposed to just putting regular filler, if you put regular filler and it was open in the back, the filler is going to suck that humidity in like a sponge. So your work doesn't last very long. By doing this, you're kind of buying years as opposed to months. Now, once that's done, we're going to buzz it off with this guy. That's an 11 inch Astro pneumatic. That thing is awesome. As far as I know, they're the only ones that make a little shorty like that. Um, mind you, you can get third sheet uh, sanders and whatnot, but you know, as far as an airline sander goes, that's the only one I know of that side. That thing has been indispensable. So we'll take 80, we'll buzz this down, just get all the highs off it. Then we'll run our filler across it. We did the same thing here. Here I kind of buried it all and got a little crazy. Um, I ended up hitting it hard with the hammer here and it created like a, a 45 and it should have been round and inside was round. So we, we put a bit of extra on there. And again, extra is like, it's like almost nothing. Just enough to get the shape to look right. So the next stage, after we buzz that down, just put our filler over it 
and uh, we put it on pretty fat. And the reason for that is if you put it on thin, you're saving material, you're going to block it, and then you're going to fill your lows, you're going to block it. Sometimes you end up chasing it too many times, and then you create little waves. So what I like to do is I smear it all on, and then I smear another coat on over top of the whole thing. There's places as you're going, it'll start to go funny, and that's when you know you're done spreading. Um, so you're going to have little divots and holes and whatever. So basically you put it on in almost like, I'd say, two coats, so to speak. And uh, the last one, as you can see, was a little bit messy, but we got too much. And the nice thing about too much, we'll take our line sander. Now, normally you'd block something like that. I'm going to do this with the line sander first and finish it off with the block. Now, I do know it's not perfect, and as heavy as the filler is, it probably won't be quite enough. So what I like to do when I'm doing this, uh, just because I found it saves a lot of time, this is the filler I use. This is comparable to um, Evercoat Rage. Everybody's probably tried that at one time if you're into this stuff. Uh, that Rage is a really good product. I'd say this is second place to it, but it's really, really close, and I do like it. It goes on thick and fat, but kind of smooth. And, I mean, I showed it to you. Is it all the way as good as the Rage? Uh, no. If you want to put a thin coat on at the end, this stuff doesn't quite squish in the way the Rage would. However, this is better than the Rage for finishing work. The downside to this product is you can't quite get it that thick. So what I like to do is I like to buy these two products and I use them together. Uh, in Canadian money, 60 and 60 a gallon. Right now, Rage, Z-Grip, they're north of 100. 120, 130, I think Rage, Z-Grip's about 120. Now, that's the last time I checked months ago, so... You know the way supplies are now, everything is through the roof. So this, two of these, is the price of one of those. Um, and it's a good product. And what I like the most, I gave this stuff a torture test. We smeared some of it on a panel. And we smeared a little bit of Evercoat on the panel, just the light in the white can. We jabbed at it with a screwdriver. These ones both held up better than the Evercoat. I'm just putting that out there so you know. Now... The Rage might have held up better than the regular light, but at any rate, these held up just fine. So that's what I do. I use the gold first. If I have to, we'll put a little bit of that on for any pinholes or, you know, any little funniness we had while doing it. And it seems to work great. Um, that's just been my process. And I mean, usually I can just prime and paint over that and we're golden. Um, cause you know, we're not going over big big areas. Now, if we were doing the whole quarter like this, um, I wouldn't need, I wouldn't need that one because we'd do this. We'd probably flood the whole quarter. We'd block the whole quarter until we were happy. Then I'd put a couple coats of super build or high build or some kind of pre three, two, one, which I really like. Depends on what we're burying and how we want it to stick. Um, on this car, we went with G2 Feather Fill. This car had a lot of trauma and it was crazy. This car is the flattest car I think I've ever done. For those who don't know 63 Caddy, there's a lot of videos on that. But for this car, the rest of it was done very old school. I imagine there's nothing on this but a bunch of filler, a little bit of uh, lacquer primer, and orange paint. So... We're just going to go up to what they did, paint from the line down. So once again, if you subscribe to the channel, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, if you are new, I hope you enjoy.